Hey guys, what's up? This is a video about my upgrade from a GTX 770 to my EVGA uh, 1070 for the win edition. This video is specifically about this upgrade, so it should be very helpful for those who are upgrading from an NVIDIA GTX 770 or a GTX 960 or an AMD Radeon HD 7970 or a R9 280X. If you're looking for specifically benchmarks on the 1070, I highly suggest this video by Hardware Unbox. If you're looking for a review of the GTX EVJ 1070 for the win edition, I highly recommend this comprehensive video by Minimalistic. So let's cut into a sped up version of the unboxing of this product while I explain to you why it is that I went with the GTX EVJ 1070 for the win edition uh, and specifically why I wanted to upgrade in the first place. So the game that made me realize I want to upgrade my GPU was The Witcher 3, which I started playing this May. At ultra settings, I was getting somewhere in the range of 30 FPS, which for me is unplayable. Even at minimum to medium settings, I was only getting between 50 and 70 FPS, sometimes dropping into the 40s. Um, I love The Witcher 3 and I played it through, but the whole time I kept thinking I really need to upgrade my GPU so I can play the DLC at Ultra. It was sort of ruin not I wouldn't say ruining my experience, but hindering it for sure. So that made me realize I wanted a new uh, GPU. Obviously, I would benefit from higher FPS in other games as well, because I currently own and use a uh, 1080p 144Hz monitor. So I felt like a 1070 would be uh, providing me those extra frames where the GTX 1060 or the AMD RX 480 would only really get me playable frame rates, but they wouldn't be hitting 144 FPS or even 100 FPS in many modern titles. Once I decided to go with the 1070, I did look at several models. I was really close to buying the gain word goes like hell edition, but ultimately I chose the EVJ for the win edition because of its relatively smaller size and because the company has better customer support. And honestly, it looks a lot nicer as well. In fact, it looks so nice that I'm considering switching back to my MATX case uh, with a side window that also has a horizontal motherboard or getting a side window uh, or side panel with a window for my Define R5 case that I'm using right now because this card just looks that sexy. And here's what the GPU looks like inside of the case in the dark. All right, now that you guys have seen the unboxing experience and what the card looks like inside of my case, let's start moving into the benchmarks. Before that, have a look at my test rig specifications. Most importantly, I'm using an i5-4670K at 4 gigahertz. I have 16 gigs of 1600 megahertz RAM. The first GPU is the Asus GTX 770DCUI2 with a factory overclock. No other overclocks have been applied to this card, whereas the EVGA GTX 1070 for the win has a 130 MHz GPU clock overclock and 300 on the memory, so that it was running at 2076 in-game. The benchmarking resolution used for each game is 1920 by 1080. All the games were maxed out with both graphical settings and anti-aliasing. However, I did turn off motion blur when possible, and I also did not use hair works for The Witcher 3. I did the Unigen Heaven 4 benchmark, and I benchmarked 10 games. Out of the 10 games, 8 were using the game's in-game benchmark utility, and 2 games I did a benchmarking run, which were The Witcher 3 and The Vanishing of Ethan Carter. So without further ado, let's have a look at those benchmarks.
there we have it. Those were the benchmarks. This last slide is showing you the FPS percentage delta between the GTX 770 and the GTX 1070 with the overclock applied. Black is for the increase in the minimum FPS and red is for the increase in the average FPS. And this is percentages, not FPS. I benchmarked these specific games because A, I own them, B, I've either played them or am I, I'm going to play them. So I wanted to see what the difference really was. And C, I was actually kind of interested to see how older games would react to the GPU upgrade compared to some of the newer games. And in fact, some of the older games, especially Dirt 3 and Bioshock, really they didn't see that much of a performance gain compared to the newer games. Uh, what really shocked me was the Bioshock Infinite actually had a lower minimum FPS with the 1070. Um, and I'm not exactly sure what would cause this, maybe drivers. I did do the benchmark several times to test and see if this was a mistake, but at least with my system, it wasn't a mistake. I was also very happy to see that the newer games were actually able to utilize the card at close to 100% or at 100% and really get those uh, benefits. What's really surprising to me is some of the uh, minimum gains we have here. For instance, Tomb Raider had actually more of a minimum gain than on the average gain, which is brilliant. That's actually what I would prefer because I hate FPS drops and I don't like it going much below uh, the refresh rate of my monitor. Another really cool thing was how balanced Ethan Carter was in terms of the minimums and the average FPS. I feel like games should be optimized that way overall. And now if you look at the overall performance delta increases, we have 105 on the minimum and 115 on the average FPS. This is percentage points. So we more than doubled the performance of my card. And if we don't calculate those older games that aren't utilizing the GPU at 100%, we're talking closer to 150 than 100 in that case. Especially if you look at the Unigen Heaven 4 increases, the minimum delta went up by 288% and the maximum went up by 176 percent that's just amazing i'm really happy with these benchmark results all right guys so that was my video on the 1070 i'm really happy with the results i'm super excited to see how it performs in some of the other modern games that i haven't purchased it and have had no reason to play because of my old gpu um, i'm probably going to lower down some of my settings in the witcher 3 just so I can get a slightly higher FPS there. That is a super demanding game. Um, overall, it's just wiping the floor with my old GPU. I can't wait to try out streaming with the GPU. I can't wait to just enjoy these modern games with the highest possible settings uh, and still getting a really good frame rate. Uh, for me, high FPS is just, high hertz is just, unparalleled to anything i mean if if you have a great gpu but you're only running at 60 hertz unless you're doing 4k you're really doing yourself a disservice uh, especially now that you have stuff like g-sync and FreeSync, where you don't have to be hitting that high ceiling all the time for me it's just a game changer it's just as important as a good gpu and now thankfully i have both a high-end gpu and a high hertz monitor and i'm just going to be really enjoying my my gaming and my streaming and uh, I'm just super excited. So my impressions were great. Do you have any questions or comments? Just leave them below. I'll be definitely posting updates on any anomalies, any problems, any benefits that I've noticed that I didn't mention in this video because like I said, this is a brand new video card for me. Um, thanks for watching. Let me know what you thought about the video. I've never done a video like this before, but it was a lot of fun. And the reason why I did it was because I was just super hyped and I was super interested to see what the actual real world benefits would be from the GTX 770 to the 1070. Hopefully this video was helpful for you guys who are in the same situation as me looking at upgrading to the 1070 from one of those cards I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Thanks for watching and peace out.